Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Everton transfer video and because Paul loves to talk about Everton so that nobody else needed to be on the couch because we don't want to have a four hour long video. Um, we can talk all day. We'll try and keep it as short as possible but Paul has a lot to say about Everton. Yeah, and well we'll try and narrow it down to snow and all in in about 15 minutes. Yeah, hopefully anyway. We'll say 15 minutes now and then in people will be looking down at the time it'll be 40 minutes long or something um, but we'll start firstly with it's been a very very busy transfer window so far for Everton with kind of players coming in but it, I think it's been busy more with rumours than anything because when we were writing down the players who kind of come in it's not actually that many when you look at it it's kind of Klassen, Pickford, Keane, Rooney, Sandro and then Onyokuro who's obviously gone straight back and to Anderlecht yeah. Of those five guys, who are you most happy with so far? From performance wise, Sandro. I mean, yeah. he just looks like something we haven't had in years. Someone who's actually going to chase down the ball from the front, from the get go. I mean, Lukaku is a completely different player to him. Uh, just, he's totally different. Like, he'll actually press. He'll actually press um, <laughs> on the. Like, on the, from the strikers. He'll, he'll be the first one to press, whereas Lukaku wasn't doing that last season. And that, obviously. That's someone in the Cumin sort of mould that we've yeah. needed for a long, long time. And he seems to be the one leading the attack, which I like Rooney as well. I'd like to see him get a couple more games just to see him get that uh, sharpness back. He still looks a little bit rusty. I also like uh, Klassen. He just looks like he has that touch of class about him. Yeah. No pun um, intended. <laughs> um, no, for me, like looking at them on paper, especially I've not seen as much of Everton in the pre-season as you have. I've seen a little bit of them, more so in the Europa League games. Um, but for me, Klassen on paper is the best signing that you have made. Um, he's just as cliche or you know as punny as it sounds like. He's he's just classy. Yeah. On the ball, he just he uses that like even the pass for Calvert Lewin in the second leg. Um, yeah. Against goal, Rosin, yeah. Rosin the broker or whatever they were called. You can't pronounce that. <laughs> I can't. I don't have it spelt. So I have it spelt. So I can't do it. Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock. That's it. Um, but I'm that, here all week. But that pass, like obviously there was a lot of space for it, but the kind of place of it and the weight of the ball was just absolutely perfect. And he didn't really have to break the stride because of it. Like yeah. it was kind of at that kind of pace, and I think that's that's what we've lacked as well. People will talk about what Ross Barkley and stuff like that. He can't pick out passes like that. There's times when he can, but he dwells on the ball too much, and you just see someone like Class and he's going to give it when it needs to be given. Yeah. Um. So we'll move on then. We we'll talk about Class in there. Uh, we we'll move on to Pickford. And obviously Pickford is coming in a lot of money, a lot of hype around him because he's a young English goalkeeper and obviously we've had everything with Joe Hart at club level in the last couple of years. Butland's been injured. It seems like there's a lot of okay English keepers around there, but there's no great ones. And I think a lot of English pundits and a lot of people in England are looking at it going, Jesus class or Pickford is like this the next great goalkeeper, he's next like David Seaman level goalkeeper for them. Um, are you happy with him for thirty million, or do you think it might have actually been a little bit too pricey for a keeper who's only got one Premier League season? I think it's a bit pricey for someone who's played one season, but at the same time, it's not coming out of my pocket, so I do not give a shit about the, the price of anything these days. Yeah, the the market's gone crazy. Everyone knows that. Um, now a couple of the Sunderland fans, and they've said that he was the best keeper in the league last season. Obviously, we didn't watch him in, uh, like all the time to see I've only ever seen him in the games against us but watching him during pre-season and his um, distribution from, yeah. from kickouts is ridiculously good and he gets you up the pitch quick I mean all I can do is give him another season and just to see how he fares I, I'm not going to judge him till he has a season under his belt yeah. I mean he's already came in and Joe looks like he's got the boot now because of it and Stecklenberg's come in as the number two so that kind of shows He's already came in. I know he came in at thirty million, but he came in and he's already shouldered them two out. Yeah, well, like I think with Pickford, his most impressive attribute is actually his distribution oh, and everything like that. That he just he could put a ball in the sixpence from a kick out or out of his hands and stuff like that. And his you know his distribution with his hat or out of his hands as well yeah. is very good. And that's something that I think maybe Everton have lacked with both Rob Lewis and Stecklenberg. I think Stecklenberg. Tim Howard. Yeah. Well, Tim Howard was just your average American goalkeeper, wasn't he? Great shot stopper, could save penalties, but dear God, don't put the ball at his feet. Uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we love you, Tim, but... Cheers for last season wasn't the greatest, but anyway. <laughs> um, 
And Michael Caine, who another I'm one. Very happy with him. I watched him a good bit uh, in pre season, and he's just very good. He's taking the ball out from the back, back a lot like John Stones did when he played for us, but better. Doesn't yeah. lose the ball, and knows when to give it, knows when to get rid of it. And yeah. that's what we need, and we need another. Um, Cumin is in the mark for another left left sided centre back who can also play left back. He came out and said it there last night. So yeah. I don't know. Van Dijk handed in a transfer request today. Just this talk. Cumin said that we've only spent seven million, realistically, realistically because of the money on Lukaku. So there is money there for them to go out and buy more. There's obviously Sigurdsson. It looks like he's on his way in. And then if we could get someone like Van Dijk or Koulibaly of uh, Napoli, we've been linked for two summers now. Well, Koulibaly would be. Um ridiculously good signing because he's just an animal of a man yeah um and he's quite a, he's similar enough to van dyke he's maybe not as good on the ball as van dyke is but in the air he's probably and it's a big statement to kind of make with how good van dyke has been in the air killer Bally is far better than him yeah he's just a monster is, of a man really isn't he mountain man yeah he's just like one of these fellas with just a ungodly leap where the ball could be miles in the air like and the striker's looking at a going right I'm going to run onto this and he yeah. just goes up and wins the head kind of reminds me of a much better version of Chris Samba he just scares the shit out of you like. yeah well let's not get into Chris Samba John Terry's budging and I see the half party yeah, so like, how is he still playing but... yeah especially alongside Terry Um, for me it's, I'm not I'm not wholly convinced by Michael Caine why I just he was in a Burnley side and he kind of you get to play a lot on the back foot with Burnley. It's kind of, you look better as a defender if you have a good game. Same with Tom Heaton and goal for them, where Heaton looks really good because he's loads of shots to save and everything like yeah, that. You could say that, you could argue that about Pickford too. Yeah, but that's, I'm not wholly convinced by Pickford either as a 30 million pound player. Um, not fair. I just, he's going to come into an Everton side where they're going to be on the front foot as a lot more than he was at Burnley and I feel like there's a reason United let him go in the first place and maybe it's he's got the mentality of playing for a smaller side with their backs to the wall rather than playing at a top team who have a lot of possession and you're actually doing more passing as a central defender than you are defending well he's already put Jack Yelke out of the team it's not hard, is it? Well, he had a great end to the season last year. Yeah. He was scoring goals for fun and he was coming in and he was actually looked like the old Jackie Elke. Yeah. Um, he was actually like a, a very good defender in his day. Yeah. But, yeah, he came in and he's, he's, he shipped him straight out. I'd still like to see Holgate get in the game at centre-back. I still think he has a lot to offer. Yeah. Well, I'll mix all oh, these... We had Cuco Martina as well. Okay. But less said about him, the better, because <laughs> yeah. he's awful. I completely forgot he even signed his. Um... Yeah, well, but he's, he's, he's been an honest. I'll bump all these in together then quickly with, we just mentioned Jaggy Elka, but another central defender who's kind of maybe just been completely forgotten about by Everton fans is Romino Funes Mori. And Useless. as an extension to that defensively, do you need another left back as well? Yeah. Because only Leighton Baines is really there as a senior left back and for me, he doesn't look the player he was three or four years ago at all. Are you asking me, do we need a left back? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm just trying to struggle to find what where are the left backs gone. Your man Robertson, who went to Liverpool, I would have gladly have taken him. Yeah. Um, but he got snapped up. I don't think he went for that much at all. No, he was 12 million or yeah, something. Yeah, that's nothing in today's market, you know what I mean? Um, who would I have left back? I don't know. It's, There's it's, not a massive kind of... Yeah, I mean the one I one I'd link because of the money Everton have as well, and one that would make sense to me, especially I don't know if Ashley Williams would play any sort of part in that side of it. But Ben Davis from Spurs, who sits on the bench for Spurs, never Danny Rouse is fit. I, a player like that coming in to compete with Baines, and maybe he sits on the bench for a year or doesn't play that much with Baines for a year, and then Baines maybe moves on, and then Davis comes in and steps in. He's got plenty of Premier League experience, and he looks a very good player. Well, I don't. I'm not a fan of Ben Davis. Yeah. To be honest with you, I we have a good young player, Callum Connolly there. Yeah. Who could come in and do a job? And just talking him being included into the Swansea deal, which I wouldn't like to see. I'd like to see him stay. I'd like to see he can play anywhere across the back four, and he's a very good player. And he just won the England Under Twenty World Cup as well, uh, yeah. as as well as John Joe Kenny, Kieran Dell, Luckman, and um, Cavalier. So we have a good group of them. I'd like to keep them all together. Yeah. Well, 
then you kind of shook off Funes Mori as a player who kind of just doesn't really exist to Everton fans anymore. He look, yeah, but you've only got if if Kilman's looking at Mason Holgate as a right back for the time being, obviously with Coleman being out injured. You've then only really got Jackie Elka, Ashley Williams, and Michael Keane. Yeah, because he has, Mar- Benning, he has Martina. Well, Martina's a right back though, and he but he's going to play Holgate ahead of him at right back. Well, he's got Jonzo Kenny as well. Yeah, he was very good. He's just young. I think but he's just a bit raw. But is he going to risk John Joe Kenny and Holgate at centre half? You know, in the same team. In the oh no league, no no! John Joe Kenny's a right back. Yeah, I know that. But then moving, if you're talking about instead of Funes Mori being a part of anything, if you're moving Holgate into the middle, is he really going to go at any point with John Joe Kenny at right back and Mason Holgate at right centre back? I don't think that would matter because he would put Ashley Williams in beside him for experience and Baines would probably be on the other side. So they have the back four are experienced. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Holgate's played the last two seasons now. So yeah. he, 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 soon enough, would have to get the recognition to be put in. John Stones was, was, was put in. He was apparently good enough. So yeah. why can't Holgate beat? Holgate looks a lot better in my opinion. Better defender. No real in then. This summer has been Wayne Rooney so far. And <laughs> obviously United fans are going to kind of look at it from a oh, ground. We're rid of him. Because he's been really unimpressive for United in the last couple of years. But coming back to Everton and dropping down that slight level I guess. Not as in he's dropping down to a relegation threatened club. But a team where there's less pressure on him especially kind of media wise. Um, and he's not the captain of the club or anything like that. You happy with Rooney coming back, or would you have been hundred percent happy? Or would you have been happier with maybe Sigurdsson coming in earlier than he might? No, I think um, I'm hundred percent happy with him coming back. Uh, I think he'll bring a winner mentality to a lot of the youngsters there. Um, I also think that he needs a new challenge, and this is the perfect challenge to get Everton into the top four. It's something I think that will drive him on. Um, I think he needs more game time to get back to the level. Of, like anyone who's played the game knows, like if you've been out of a team for a while, your confidence goes a little bit. You still think, are you still that same player? And you know, you need a couple of games just to get yourself back in there. And then once he's get once he once he gets a run of goals, I know he scored two in pre season, but once he, like if he scores, look, if he scores the winning goal in Goodison against Liverpool. Yeah, he's he's a hero, and that's that. And then, like, he doesn't have to do anything ever again. He just can just live off that goal, or or or, or a goal against any sort of top side. Yeah, that's all. He, if he gets ten goals this season, and they're vital goals, in my opinion, good sign. Where free, he's he might United and England's best striker of all time. Yeah, why not take him on a free? He's thirty one. It's not like he's thirty eight. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's why a lot of people are coming out and saying it's thirty one. Where where do you think he'll play? Will he play up front or will he play in the hall? I think he'll be a mixture of kind of like he was with United in that uh, oh, uh, 2011 when he scored those all those goals uh, yeah. when he finished in the 20s mark 25 goals I think 2012-2013 as far as I can remember I think it was 11-12 when 11-12 uh, just after Ronaldo left 11-12 then yeah. yeah and he was banging them in for fun I think he'll play either in the hole behind Sandro or up top and then they'll play players to accommodate uh, him and Sandra. Yeah. They well, do need another striker though, so I don't know what they're doing there. Yeah, I was going to bring on to that then, if you're talking about kind of having Sandra as kind of a wide, kind of left forward type player, maybe yeah. a Calvert Leon or Morales or um, Balassio on his back fit on the other side. There's a lot of players there that people forget about, you know. Would Olivier Giroud be the perfect signing if there was any way you could get him? Um, I like Giroud. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be totally. I wouldn't be running around going, "Oh my God, what a signing!" I think he'd be a solid enough sign, and he'd get us about fifteen goals this season. My thing with Giroud for you guys would be, I think he's perfect in the sense that, as I say, with Sandro being either beside him or out to the left, and another quick player being the other side of him, that just playing the ball into Giroud. Giroud's got a good touch, and he's good with the ball at his feet. He's good creatively. The player like he can bring players like that into the game in a similar fashion than Rudy can. Yeah. But he's obviously much better in the air. Um another Arsenal striker who's hundred percent on the market and hasn't been linked that much with Everton, but if Everton are kinda of happy enough with what they have with Sandra and Rooney but just need another body in. Lucas Perez from his first season yeah. at Arsenal, is there any way I know he's heavily enough linked with Newcastle at the minute, but as a backup 
if you're happy enough with Rooney and Sandra was your first two? No, because he turned us down to go to Arsenal last year. We were yeah. linked to them, and he turned us down to go to them, so no, I wouldn't. Uh, I thought you were going to say Walcott, to be honest with you, because we were linked to him too. But hey, there's another Arsenal striker out there that everyone's talking about. Why not get Sanchez for 50 million if he's gone for 50 million? Not that he'd come, but why not go for it? You got the money, go for it. Yeah, but you wouldn't have the money for his wages. And we would now with Mashiri, 100% we would. Yeah, but you're breaking your wage structure, paying 400 grand a week to a 31 year old from Chile. <laughs> or a 30 year old from Chile, yeah. sorry. Ah, well, it's one of us, we can dream. Um, an interesting little one of Onyekoro, who's obviously gone on loan to Anderlecht after coming in. He was top scorer in the Belgian second division last season. Um, is that a good sign for Everton that they've now got to the level where they're signing kind of a player like that, like someone like a Chelsea or Arsenal or City or United or whatever would have in the past, seeing a promising player going, right, let's snap him up, we'll get him out on loan for a year to a club back where he's from or another league that we think would be good for his development. Is that good to see from Everton that they're kind of broadening their scouting net outside of obviously they bring through a lot of young players from kind of England and Liverpool? Yeah, well, I think it's Mashiri. He's changed the whole structure of the club. He has yeah. the club going that direction. PSG were about to sign him on Kuru yeah. and they were trying to rush the deal. Yeah. And then uh, they were like, no, 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 you have to sign, you have to sign, you have to sign. He done, I think he did a um, medical with them yeah. and they were trying to rush to sign him. And whatever way Everton did it, they thought, oh, well, look, we'll put you on loan, you can go to Anderlecht, you'll be there number nine next year, and then you can have spend a year there, develop, and then come back to us. Yeah. And that's what he done. So I think the most impressive thing is PSG, you look at their their like stopping power they have, them. Look, they bought Neymar, yeah. threw all the money in the world they wanted him, yeah. and Everton are competing with them to sign young players, and it's a good sign going forward. Yeah. 100%. We mentioned two more young players then for Everton, in Tom Davis and Adam Allard Luckman. And they're two guys who Dominic calvert has obviously made a bit of an impression with the goal in the Europa League and stuff like that. And you can see a natural place for him to kind of fit into the team this season at times. If Rooney is going to play as that striker, him playing as kind of one of the wide forwards alongside Sandro. Mm, I'd like to where, see more down the middle. Where do Luckman and Tom Davis fit into the kind of current setup? Obviously, you've got Schneider and Gay and Klass, and are probably your first choice in midfield yeah but the way he's been playing class and he's been kind of playing him he's kind of drifts a bit like Christian Eriksen for Spurs yeah. uh, I'd love to see Davis play more but then again you look at Davis can play a lot of positions came yeah. on the other night he played right wing back looked very good people will argue it was against a shy opposition but he still looked good and he's still he can attack he can defend he's just a very very clever young footballer and yeah. I just think he's only going to get better as far as Luckman um, I just like to see him score a goal. He seems like his confidence is is, is just shook. Yeah. Like uh, when he plays for us, he's good for England. He got player of the tournament in that World Cup. Yeah. Um, but for us, he doesn't seem to be kind of doing it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. I he he looks a little bit weak. Uh, but he's very skillful and a lot of pre season. A lot of people have been raving about him. He's very, he came on against Sevilla, and between himself and Pickman, or Pickford, sorry. Uh, they both got rave reviews from the game against Sevilla yesterday. So. And I'll take it then that Ashley Williams is going to be the one who's alongside Michael Keane, or mm. would you have Jaggy Elka ahead of him after the end of the season? I think yeah. they'll play a three at the back a lot of the time. I think it'll differentiate between Holgate, Keane, Jaggy Elka, and Williams. And yeah. Mar- Funes Mori's injured. You know, you touched yeah. on him earlier. I think he would have been sold if he wasn't injured. Yeah. He's out long term. He won't be back till after Christmas. Yeah, he's around Christmas time or after Christmas. Yeah, but even at that, that, he's a liability. Yeah. He's an absolute liability. I hope he goes somewhere like Ace Milan. They seem to buy strange players like that in Barini. I'd say they'd come in for someone like him. I don't know. Well, I think they're pretty set at centre half with Leonardo Benucci. Yeah, no. so. <laughs> I think you could probably put one Leonardo Benucci in there and he'd be better than fourth in as Maurice. But. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we'll move on then to the other side of the column then, the players who've left. Obviously the big one is Romelu Lukaku. Um, but apart from that, you've got Aidan McGeady is gone. Um, See ya. Arena Kone. See ya. Uh, Kieran Dowell and Matty Pennington have both gone on loan to the Championship. See ya, Matty. Kieran, I miss you. Uh, Tom Cleverley's gone to Watford, forgot entirely he was still never in play. I like Tom Cleverley. It's just, it's just, he's just a bit. He has a bit of class about himself, not so much as a player. But he's a he's a he's a good lad. Yeah, and then you've got three players being linked with kind of leaving at the minute, and that's Aaron Lennon to Watford, 
Ross Barkley and Joe Robles, would you be sad to see any of them go? No. I would have been, if you had asked me in March, if you would have been sad to see Ross Barkley go, I would say yes, before we made all those signings. But yeah. if you're not going to, what, what's, what's stopping you? You need a new challenge. Where was your old challenge? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the clubs are bringing in all these players they can afford to keep them on. Why would you leave when the club's on the rise? Yeah. Like, they're probably going to come into their best squad. We, we have our best squad we've ever had. Yeah. Right now. Why would you leave? I, I just, I would question his mentality. And um, he's, he's a bit brain dead anyway. I've met him a few times. He's a bit... <laughs> uh, I think man. ever since, you know, when he got punched out. Yeah. Ever since then, I think he just wants to get out of Liverpool, which is fair enough. You know, he'd, be, he'd probably end up going somewhere like Man City. What I'm kind of thinking with Barkley and what I think the most likely destination for him is having actually looked at currently what the situation is at the club. I think Ross Barkley to Chelsea makes a lot of sense for the pure fact that Chelsea currently have 18 senior outfield players and only four of them meet the criteria for homegrown players. Yeah. So they need desperately English players to come in. They were linked today with Danny Drinkwater for 30 million, which is absolutely ludicrous to be four choice central midfielder. Someone like Barkley for 30, 40 million, I think would definitely interest Chelsea at this point. Yeah, I mean, well, he's in the final year of his contract. I'd take 35 million for him and just thanks for his time. Yeah. There's no point dwelling on players in this day and age. There's no loyalty out there, as you can see with Lukaku and, and players like that. There isn't, and Neymar. Um, you, look, it is what it is these days, you know, and this is the way football's going. And this is the way, as an Everton fan, you want players to play for the shirt. But if you want to go in the right direction, you see these players play for City and Chelsea. They're not playing for the shirt, they're playing for the money. So that's the way football's gone. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's the way it is. And then another one I mentioned there is Joe Robles. And he looks like he's on his way back to Spain, pro- or probably. Um, obviously, you're not going to be sad to see him go because he's not that good. But would you have rather it's Stecklenburg or Robles to stay out of the field and with your back up? Um, I don't really care about either of them. Cumin sees them every day in training, so yeah. I'll leave him make that decision, in my opinion. Robles is okay. I'd like to see him go to a club where he could develop. Yeah, he could have time to develop. With us and the direction we want to go, he doesn't. He won't get that time, and that's the sad, uh, sad reality to yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to be a backup. Yeah. Um, he seems to love the club. He seems to embrace the club. He... He's always getting selfies with fans, and he always he, he seems quite funny on social media. Yeah. He, he's he's a nice guy as well. I met myself. He's a nice guy. Um, his heart's in the right place, but his ability isn't. If you get me, yeah. so I think he'll end up going back to Spain. I'd like to see him go back to Spain and get in with the club there. Um, and then is the thinking for Kilman behind keeping Stecklenburg possibly that Pickford's coming in? Pickford's still a young goalkeeper with not a hell of a lot of experience at the top level. And one thing Stecklenburg has is bags of experience at top level clubs and top level football. The man's played in the World Cup final. Yeah. Like he's no slouch in terms of his experience and he's played for Ajax and Rome as well. Yeah, so he's kinda he's dropped off the boil as a goalkeeper in the last kind of few years. But back in twenty ten he was one of the kinda one of the top rated goalkeepers in the world when he was at Ajax. He's been linked with every club after the World Cup. Is it good to have a guy, first of all, who has the experience of Stecklenburg um, to be there as Pickford's backup? And secondly, a guy who was kind of was in Pickford's position at one point and didn't achieve that for Pickford to see, all right, well, this is where he went wrong and this is where I can't go wrong. Uh, I think with, with Stecklenburg, he's prone to an error. He'll have an unbelievable game like he did against City, saves two penalties, and then next week he drops a clanger. Yeah. So, I don't know, he's very inconsistent, but back in the day he was good, yeah, I'll give him that. I think Pickford seen like he wasn't going to get a walk in the park. When Pickford came back, he played again. Declan Bird came in, yeah. then Pickford came back in. So, I think he's saying to him, you know, you're not guaranteed your place. Work your ass off and you'll get picked. Yeah. Well, we'll kind of wrap it up in a second, but first off, I'll go with... Um, what's a one kind of player that you now haven't signed who you've been linked with or whatever that's realistic that you'd want I'm going to take Gilfie Sigurdsson out of it because he's essentially kind he's of done, done at this point yeah. so, Dominic King said it the other night in the, yeah. at the Liverpool game I was asking him in the lift Yeah, and he said it's all but done same with Coutinho 
So what players? Sorry. That's it. I'm gonna have to address my fantasy team after these. Now. Um, realistic <laughs> signing. Who would get us goals? I would like another striker. Yeah. A realistic target. I don't know because I'll throw it out at you, Josh King. No, I want. No. Be- I want. I want. I want quality. Do you know what I mean? He had a good season. He's a good player. I want. I want top quality. Pass with Dahlberg from my act. I mean, we were like with him. I just think he's a bit young to be what coming into him. But, right, if he what, came, but if he came in with Rooney already there, and Rooney could take some of the slack, and Sandro could take some of the slack. Mm, I don't know. I haven't watched him enough. I would probably be looking at someone like I don't know, maybe Belotti. But I don't think we'll be paying that's that a much. A lot of money. It's fifty million. It's more than that. Seventy or eighty for him. No, well, then we won't be getting him. But <laughs> it's a lot. It's fifty million. And it's achievable. If it's fifty, you'd go. Yeah, okay. But this is a look. There's not that many goal scorers out there. So look, Man United came and took our one. So yeah, um, it goes to show there's just not that many out there. An well, ideal sign I'd love is Harry Kane, but we're never going to get him. Let's be honest. No, it's you could be in the same room as Harry Kane either. Yeah. Too, he's looked too alike. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a compliment or not. Red lorry, yellow lorry. <laughs> um, what's your realistic hopes down for the season whatever? and obviously you're in a lot of competitions and the Europa League is a lot of games as well obviously providing you get past Hatchick Split in the qualifying oh, round, which you should do but Charles beat them <laughs> yeah that was a long time ago um, what are your realistic things then top four or what you be, actually what would you be happier with Finishing in the top four or winning the Europa League? Europa League. I want to see us win a trophy. Yeah. Uh, the wait's been too long. Yeah. I want to see us either go have, go for the Europa League strong or go for the FA Cup strong. Yeah. Um, this season, I don't really care about the league. I'd like to see us just go and try to win something. Yeah. A day out in Wembley or a day out in wherever the Europa League final is. The Europa League final is in Lyon this year, I think. Yeah, well then. Perfect. You'll catch me in France if we get there. So, and when... I'll be, uh, I think it's a realistic achievement to win the Europa League. So even with going, Arsenal in there. So you got realistically you can win the Europa League and then realistically if he's are gonna go that far in the Europa League, where he's gonna finish in the league? Top six. Top six? And who do you finish above out of that big top seven? Which Liverpool. team do you finish above? Liverpool? I knew you were gonna say that. I just I genuinely <laughs> think we, I, I don't think they bought well enough this summer. That's just my own opinion. Like yeah, they can I, give me a stick in the comments. Like, I welcome it. I, oh and by the way, when you're subscribing, you'll find it right here. Oh, nice. I like that one. I might test you now. You can also find it here. It's right there. It's right in there. <laughs> uh-